GPT-4 is super impressive and you can use it for many useful tasks. But implementing such a model for a prolonged of time can become quite expensive. Especially when you have a lot of data that requires you to remove personal information, you might want to use something that's more lightweight, secure and cheaper. The process of knowledge distillation involves taking the output of one classifier and using that to transfer its knowledge to another classifier. The latter usually being more lightweight, efficient and cheaper. By initially using GPT to label some of our data, we can extract its knowledge in the form of labels. And we can then use these labels to train a small lightweight classifier that we can implement instead of the more expensive and less secure GPT model. So the overall logic is very simple. Of course, a GPT model is great at classifying texts, but a GPT model can do so much more, like writing poetry or coding software. And GPT is really great at all these tasks because it is really big and it was trained on a huge amount of data. And while that is technically impressive, a large and expensive model plus a lot of features directly translates to us having to pay a lot of money for things we might not even be interested in. Because maybe we are just interested in doing one single task, like sentiment analysis. Or perhaps we are just interested in extracting certain keywords from a text. We can distill that knowledge and the capabilities from GPT and ensure that we don't have to pay for the expensive overhead that comes with these large language models. This is also not limited to the GPT models only, but all larger language models in general. Now that we've gotten the theory out of the way, let's dive right in to see how we could implement this. For this video, we are going to use some data that was scraped off from social media. We are then going to use GPT 3.5 to label that data for us. Using Refinery, we can then inspect these labels and quickly find out where these labels are good and where they might be lacking. If we spot some weaknesses, we can then incorporate other label sources to make up for that, like open source models via ZeroShot, labeling functions or even a little bit of good old manual labeling. Remember that GPT models are only one ingredient in our project. They are a very powerful one, but that shouldn't stop us from spicing things up with other techniques as well. And besides getting labels, we also need to embed our data. Embedding is the process of converting our raw text data into numeric representations of the original text data. These numeric embeddings still contain the semantic information of the original text data, but we can use it to train a machine learning model now. In this case, we'll be using a Roberta model from Cardiff NLP on Hugging Face, which was fine-tuned on Twitter data for sentiment classification. The embeddings from this model will probably yield better embeddings than a standard BERT model, because the data that we are feeding into the model should be similar to the data that it has seen during the fine-tuning process. On a side note, we can also incorporate a model like this as a source for our labels via zero-shot classification to obtain another cheap label source. Once we have some labels and our texts have been embedded, we have some options on how to proceed. Option one would be to simply use the weak supervision environment in Refinery and directly incorporate that into production via Kern AI Gates. We have included so many powerful sources to get labels, so why not use them directly on our new data once we see that we have a strong ensemble of label sources. Option two would be to combine all of our label sources into a single weekly supervised label by clicking this button here. With our easy to use Python SDK and the embedders library, we can then retrieve our data and our labels and use them to build a classification model with scikit-learn. 
Usually, a simple logistic regression is enough to build a robust and lightweight model. But you can also try out the MLP classifier that comes with sklearn. Using the embedders library, we embed newly incoming data, which we then push through our model to get a classification from the newly trained lightweight model that we have. The third option would be to take our data and our labels and then use them to fine-tune a transformer model like BERT. Using our Hugging Face adapter, you can simply connect to your refinery project and start fine-tuning a language model in just a few lines of code. This is definitely a super cool option and personally I have to say that fine-tuning models can get quite addictive. Keep in mind that with fine-tuning, the more data you have, the better the result should be down the line. Whereas the previous options also work great if you only have smaller amounts of data available. Fine-tuning a model can also take a little bit of time, so be sure to bring a GPU along or at least some patience. And there you have it. The GPD models can be truly powerful and you can also use them to extract knowledge out of them to build really solid models yourself. If you enjoyed this video then please leave a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. And if you have any feedback or comments you would like to share, leave it in the comment section down below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Cheers!